Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Configure Consulting's Streamlining Procurement with IT Asset Management webinar. Uh, my name is Anu Rao, and with me I've got Lauren Jenkins, Configure Consulting's Senior ITAM Consultant. And today we'll be discussing a framework for bringing together request, vendor, and inventory management tools under a single pane of glass uh, for the procurement process. Before we jump into uh, the actual content for today's meeting, I would like to go over some webinar guidelines with you. So please keep in mind that the webinar is being recorded and that all lines are currently muted. We'd also ask that you do not put your phone on hold or answer another call uh, while dialed into this meeting. And additionally, uh, we do encourage you to post any questions you may have or that you may think of uh, during the presentation in the question manager uh, that should show up on the right-hand side of your screen. And what we'll do is at the end of the presentation, we will address all the questions that have been posted. So before jumping into today's agenda, I'd just like to give you a brief overview of Configure Consulting. We are a consultancy firm specializing in solutions that empower top performance and efficiency across IT operations. And with practice areas, namely in, as you see here on the right-hand side of the screen, in configuration and change management, enterprise monitoring, IT asset management, data center management, enterprise security, and desktop management. And working with clients across North America, uh, including those in financial services, the public sector, aviation, telecommunications, healthcare, retail, manufacturing, and so on, our team has been able to do, our team has been able to support improved performance, availability, and also efficiency across IT operations. Today specifically though, uh, we'll start by discuss, we'll start our discussion by reviewing challenges commonly faced by procurement and asset managers. And then we'll present a framework for bringing together existing data sources into that single pane of glass I had alluded to earlier. And all of this being geared to automate existing processes and uh, promote efficiency in the procurement life cycle. Following that, Laurent will do what we like to call a day in the life demonstration. Uh, what this means is he will actually use the HP Asset Manager procurement module and walk through all of the key steps in that procurement life cycle. So he'll be demonstrating requests, um, reconciling those requests against in-stock inventory, how vendor discounts are applied, uh, as well as a number of other pretty critical steps of uh, the procurement process. Following Laurent's demonstration, uh, we will then review some of the reports that have been shown to drive huge value for organizations currently using this tool set. And finally, myself and Laurent will present Configure Consulting's Quick Start solution for implementing the HP Asset Manager uh, procurement module that uh, will really tie um, the content together. So as mentioned, please do post any questions that you have in that question manager on the right-hand side of the screen, and we will address those at the end of the presentation. So the procurement challenge. Um, you know, quite generally, the mandate for procurement is to enforce fiscal responsibility and operational efficiency as the organization grows, expands, and changes its requirements. And procurement and asset management teams are challenged to reduce costs, mitigate compliance and security risks uh, across both hardware and software, as well as provide critical information into um, key business decision making, such as budgets, forecasting, and so on. And this is quite a broad mandate when you consider that it does require extensive coordination with uh, both internal and external stakeholders. So that's just an overview um, of the challenge before we move into to the next step, which is the integrated framework that we found to be uh, so successful. So 
So this, uh, the image that you're looking at here uh, depicts what we like to think of as a single pane of glass for procurement. And uh, I'll start, you know, in describing this image from the left-hand side of your screen. Often uh, requests for a procurement request can come in through informal conversation, service desk tickets, or via a, um, an established request management um, portal or module. And all of this feeds into uh, the HP Asset Manager procurement module. And that's an important point. What we're talking about here is uh, not a replacement to existing request management necessarily. More so, this is a complementary uh, framework to leverage your existing investments and actually augment them by pulling in what you see on the right-hand side of your screen, which is that inventory management or discovery data. And this can come from a number of sources. The first two I've listed are uh, HP's offerings in, in that space, the DDMI, uh, now named uh, Universal Discovery I, uh, I being for inventory products. But also, you know, we, we do have the capability to leverage uh, other data sources, so third-party sources like Microsoft SECM, for example, uh, or even Excel sheets, ad hoc databases. There's quite a bit of flexibility there. And what happens when you bring uh, these two types of sources together is that within the procurement process, you're automatically able to reconcile uh, requests that are coming in against whatever inventory is in stock. And this prevents um, duplication of purchases and uh, wastage of resources. Also, you're able to ensure that uh, vendor discounts and volume discounts are consistently applied in a systematic format uh, across all the requests that are coming through. And finally, uh, you know, a lot of the users uh, or the end users to procurement, uh, these including your executive level or your director level approvers, um, requesters, as well as um, other members of the procurement team, they are able to access the interface through a web link, uh, a role-based, uh, quite clearly tailored web link um, designed to meet their needs from an access as well as a dashboarding perspective. So that's a high level overview of uh, the solution and, and the integrated framework that, that we're describing here today. What you see here, um, the, the bullet points on the right hand side of your screen, this is just a generic um, example of the request to um, inventory receipt or delivery process, the procurement process in its uh, most manual uh, or, or basic form. Starting uh, near the top of the bullet, uh, we see the requests come in by email, help desk ticket, or informal conversation. Um, this is, you know, this can be something from mentioned by the water cooler that he needs a new BlackBerry to something that may be more, uh, that may be coming in through more standardized channels. But the point being is that they do, these requests do come in from multiple sources. Then, you know, and, and this, again, to be clear, I'm describing the manual process uh, for procurement. Once the request comes in, the procurement team then has to obtain pricing from vendors. So often, you know, there could be reference catalogs with um, products, prices, and discounts available uh, to the team in Excel or other database format, or the team will call um, and email vendors to get quotes. Based on that information, a, um, an, estimate, uh, an estimate will be generated, and then either that estimate or a uh, first version of a purchase order gets circulated to uh, different members in the uh, chain of approval. So here we've got, you know, listed the line of business manager, the technical service owner, directors, et cetera. Each of them will individually take the step to approve, ask questions, um, or uh, re reject the purchase order. Then it's issued to the vendor. Then the inventory, you know, eventually comes into the receiving dock the requester and all the other stakeholders are notified. 
this process uh, can be quite time consuming. And what we look to do is automate as much of this as possible. And in fact, uh, with the solution set that Laurent will be showing you in just a couple of minutes here, you're going to see that it's possible to automate the workflow right from that request coming in to uh, getting your reference catalogs or your supplier catalogs built into the system such that that's all done in one step. In the one step that uh, a request comes in through, the pricing is also there, and the discounts are also there, and all the data is uh, very much up to date. Uh, then, you know, uh, similar to that step, and similar to this idea of having a standardized automated workflow, or in line with that rather, uh, we then get an estimate based on vendor catalogs. All the approvers, um, so this being line of business managers, technical service owners, directors, and uh, actually whoever is involved will then automatically be notified and have the ability to just access the web interface um, and click buttons in a tailored form to uh, push the request along. We also have a similar focus on automation when we look at um, the approvers, uh, so when we look at notifications once inventory is received. An important point to note here is this uh, degree of automation also includes the process of validating that um, when a request comes through, we're not purchase any, purchasing anything uh, before we've actually checked our in-stock inventory. So that's an idea of uh, the pro procurement life cycle and where we're uh, looking to show uh, great value in automation and efficiency. And at this point, I will uh, pass the ball over to Laurent, and Laurent will walk you through his uh, through that day in the life demo. Thank you, Anu. Appreciate that. Good afternoon, everyone. For our procurement module day in the life demo, I'm going to walk you through four major steps, and at each step in the life cycle you'll see some of the wizards and the flexibility of using those wizards, as well as many of the other features and where they come into play as a new outline for you in all the challenges uh, surrounding uh, procurement. We're going to start up with uh, request creation. In that, you're going to see how the catalog is set up and how you can use the standard request wizard to initiate um, a bundled request. You'll see through that process of creating the request how reservations can be applied to some of the items that you're ordering once they're reconciled against uh, stock. And you'll also see where approval comes into play uh, in that request creation process. Once we move from the request stage to the estimate and purchase order stage, you'll see exactly how uh, a quote can be generated and how that quote can be converted to a purchase order you'll see some customization that we put in just to show you the flexibility of the tool in general um, to show you how you can have additional approvals as well as supplementary approvals. We'll show you, um, again, some reporting features, in particular uh, a customized view to let you track some specific uh, items or issues that are uh, that are belong with some of the things you're purchasing. And then we'll uh, eventually issue that purchase order. That will lead us right into the receipt phase, where we will actually show you the receiving wizard. This is from the perspective of the person on the dock or at the receiving area. Uh, you'll see exactly what that process is like via the wizard, and also review some um, uh, points on stock management from, from the receiving perspective. And finally, we'll show you how, using the invoice wizard, you can reconcile your invoices with your suppliers and show you the full uh, paper trail, which has been electronically being recorded automatically in the background the entire process, to show you all the way from the, where it was created originally, all the way through the purchase order procedure, the receipt, who the approvers were, etc., what was ordered. You'll see the entire history of how that asset got into your company from the day it was uh, originally requested. I'm going to switch inputs here. We'll go over to our demo environment, and we will show you the procurement module. Let 
let me make this full screen. There we go. Okay. What we're looking at here, uh, we're already logged into the Asset Manager client. And I am going to start off by showing you one of the foundation pieces in the procurement module, and that is the catalogs. We're going to navigate to our catalog section. Here we are. And very simply, what the catalogs are um, are literally like the ordering catalog from your supplier. Uh, each catalog can be set up to show you the start and end dates of when they're valid, the last time the information within the catalog was reconciled, what was the specific source of the catalog, who in your company may be the supervisor of the catalog, so on and so forth. All of, all of these features and information um, are available right out of the box and are just, just waiting to be set up and customized. Within each catalog, you have references. And these are the equivalent of the actual products that that particular supplier who gave you the catalog information provides to you. And just like you saw on the previous tab, where the catalog itself had validity information associated with it, so does each product in the catalog. Uh, for example, this particular desktop I zoomed in the details on is only requestable between these starts and end dates. Also, for each of the products, you can see how much they are currently uh, uh, being priced for, what if any particular discount is applied to it, uh, what's the minimum quantity of, a given, of that given item that you can order, as well as what is the support of supplier's last reconciliation with you, what quantity of uh, that particular item is available to be ordered. Now these catalogs can be. Uh, question. Oh, yes, go ahead, Anna. Sorry, I, I just I just wanted to jump in with a question. Um, can you speak to you know for organizations that currently don't have um, an established process around uh, maintaining reference catalogs, uh, what the work effort is like around acquiring that information typically, and also what the work effort kind of looks like for getting that information into this very slick format that you've just shown us? Very good question. Um, in terms of time frame, that of course varies. Uh, it depends on the number of catalogs um, you were talking about. It depends on uh, how many different suppliers you may have in your given organization. So the, the, the setup time frame in and of itself can be variable, just, just so everyone understands. Um, but as far as uh, the technical part of that, actually uh, getting the information into Asset Manager is, by and large, um, quite easy. As a technical person, I don't like to use the word easy because everybody says, oh, well, he said it's easy. <laughs> well, well in, in this case, it's fair to say it's easy. These catalogs uh, can be set up manually, but of course, hardly anyone ever does that. It's generally done electronically through HP's Connected tool, which is essentially a uh, uh, a platform integrator. Uh, you take data from one source, provide a mapping, think of it as a field-to-field -field type of interface from the source information into the destination. In this case, the destination is uh, Asset Manager, in particular uh, the procurement module, what we're talking about here for the catalogs. And that information can be delivered from the supplier to you in, in a variety of ways. Using Connected, you can pull it directly from a website data source. You can pull it directly from a database data source or, as most commonly done in my experience, the supplier can simply deliver it to you on a regular basis an electronic file, a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet or even a Microsoft Access database type of file that Connected can interface with, integrate that information into the procurement catalogs module here, and you'll get the same information on the screen that you're seeing here through that interface. And once that scenario is uh, developed and tested and meets everyone's satisfaction, you can actually schedule it to go pull that information from your supplier on whatever the agreed uh, frequency uh, update of the data is between you and, and your supplier. 
So uh, in a nutshell, uh, once you have that scenario set, it's pretty much like a set it and forget it type of affair. As long as they deliver it to you on a timely fashion, your catalog and the references within those catalogs will be maintained. And, and that's a, a very valid point to make because prices change over time. As you saw here from some of the screens, validity dates can also change over time. That uh, update process with Connected will keep everything up to date, maintained, and fresh. Did that answer your question in there? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thanks, Lon. No problem. All right. So we've seen the source of uh, where what we're ordering is coming from. Let's move on now into the request process formally. We're going down into the procurement life cycle now. <clears throat> we're going to do our request. And we're going to create a request from a list of standard requests. In the procurement module, um, as, in, as generally with, with any ordering system, um, you can always do an a la carte uh, order or an ad hoc order. If, if you meet Johnny at the water station and he says, hey, I need a new monitor, and just walks off expecting you to follow up on that, anyone can go into the ordering system and just order, OK, a monitor. You know. <clears throat> that's, that's like an ad hoc approach. What these uh, standard requests uh, give you is um, a packaged approach you know, to address certain needs or situations that come up however occasionally or frequently or what have you in your environment. Um, uh, and, and they're bundled uh, pieces uh, to be ordered from your suppliers. For example, if you have a new employee coming into your organization, of course you want to have a, a workstation set up and ready for them when they, when they, they come in on the first day using the standard request workstation bundle here, that will already have all the workstation pieces put together to be ordered. You can submit the request for it and have it go on through the procurement lifecycle. So what we're going to do here is choose workstation. We're going to do a quantity of five. Say we have five new employees coming in. And I'm going to show you now all the features of the request wizard. OK, so here's the bundling part of it. That's the computer. Here's some other business services information related to it. Here are all the pieces on that uh, computer that you're ordering. As opposed to going in and, and picking and choosing one at a time, the standard request feature lets you, as I said, bundle it all up together. Here on the next screen, you can fill in all the details related to the request. Notice you have the option of choosing um, who the requester is. It defaults to whom's ever logged into the system. Uh, you can uh, also pick and choose who the user or ultimate user is going to be. You can also plug in your cost center information, as well as cost type, project, and location. Hold on one second. I have an artifact here on the screen that's right in the middle. Let me see if I can clear that. I'm just going to stop sharing the screen momentarily. All right, there we go. That should have cleared it on everyone's screen if you were seeing that uh, volume artifact uh, there before. All right, now, plugging in the uh, parameters here. Cost center, 
you can if this is associated to a, a particular project in your organization, you can even associate the request to that new site, new employees, and uh, you can say you want this delivered to a particular location once it arrives. If uh, the source was Johnny at the water cooler, you could type in Johnny at the water cooler right there if, if you need it. And in most situations, uh, you wouldn't bypass, obviously, the validation process <coughs> for a request, but, but obviously you have that option here. Quick summary of everything you're requesting. And the wizard builds that request for you. And there we go. Once you clear the wizard, you come into the request screen. It'll show you the request that you're building, that you're working on. And you'll notice you're still in a preparation phase. You can see here uh, from the fields we filled out on the wizard, things that were plugged in automatically. If you go to the composition tab, you can see exactly what uh, is, is comprised in this particular request. Uh, here all the, here's the main asset, obviously, the workstation, all the other information or other, other components that's going to go along with it. But notice uh, down below, you also have a few options related to this particular um, request. And all of that came from the features of that standard request. Now we're going to reconcile the options here. And we're going to do that via another wizard that supplements the request. From the options window, you saw we had a choice of printers, a laser jet or just simple desk jet or ink jet. I'll go with the desk jet. You also have the choice of uh, putting an additional screen on this particular computer as opposed to the one it's already going to come with. If so choose, you could add that. We'll go with the one screen here. And we'll validate those options. Now if we go back and take a look, the options are gone. They're rectified here in, in the individual components. And now you're ready to move the request on into its next phase. We're going to change it from in preparation state to now it needs to be approved. And at this point, this is where we will go into the workflow approval process feature. So let's show you what the workflow looks like. This is the out-of-the-box purchase request validation. And let me uh, preface this explanation with please do not be uh, alarmed or apprehensive about how this looks on the screen in terms of complexity. <laughs> you are not um, required to use the workflow as you see it here. Um, in fact, most customers customize this to their particular process uh, standards when it comes to validating uh, requests. That being said, you can see here within the workflow uh, all of the functionality it uh, gives. Once that requ uh, request moves to the status of, of waiting approval, this workflow would kick off. And then it would go to whatever approvals are required in your environment uh, from, say, a financial perspective, like you see there's a box already for that down here, or a technical approval perspective, 
or a functional perspective or whatever uh, is in your particular organization's requirements for approving a uh, purchase request. The way the workflow works is as it moves through each stage, whomever is identified as the technical approver, the financial approver, so on and so forth, or uh, whatever person within a group who may have that responsibility, they would get emails that would alert them to the existence of the request awaiting their attention, their approval. They could go in and approve, uh, uh, deny or approve on their particular part of it, and the workflow then moves those notification alerts along to the next group until you get to the final decision, request denied or request approved. And at the end of that uh, workflow, if it's part of your process, you can obviously see it's already set up here out of the box. The, the person who requested it obviously would get a notification saying, congratulations, your request has been approved, or sorry, your request has been denied, start over, or resubmit. So Laron, at this point, I do have another question for you. Um, the workflow screen that you showed, you mentioned it, it does look a little intimidating. Uh, is this the kind of thing that is you know, a professional consultant will come in once and it's a set it and forget it kind of deal? Or uh, is this an, you know, a, a constantly evolving thing that um, requires a lot of work effort over time? It doesn't require a lot of work effort over time. The initial setup, uh, obviously depending on the organization's uh, rules around um, uh, validating procurement requests, that would take some setup. And in that uh, part of it, it would be a professional consultant who would sit down with the uh, subject matter experts uh, for the procurement process in a given environment to build and design the workflow to meet their process uh, approval flow. Once that is set, uh, unless there's a policy change or something to that effect, the workflow itself won't really uh, change. It'll, it'll be that way until there's either a need to add to it or to take away, say, functional approval, you know, something like that. Um, um, at that point, it would be the asset manager administrator who would uh, take away that component of it or add, you know, another component um, in uh, to add to the whole process, it, it, like I say, if there's a policy change. <clears throat> um, over a number of years, obviously something may change, uh, and that customization um, can be done by an admin person, uh, the, the person within the organization in, in charge of the, uh, of the, the product. Um, other than that, the only other change that would go into something like, like that workflow is perhaps the uh, individuals who are involved in the approval process, obviously employees come and go, that may change. And that, again, is something the administrator can do. Um, and that's really just a, a, a click and a pick type of situation. If Joe Smith is no longer in the organization, he was the financial approver, you could go into the workflow and change the notification alerts instead of going to Joe Smith, go to a new row and uh, you know, uh, update the, the workflow for that particular change. Moving uh, on through the remainder of the request phase, now that we've gone through uh, the approvals that are involved, the request status would change from awaiting approval to validate it. And all of this would be going on automatically per the workflows and, and the responses from the workflows in, in the background. And now, at this point, we're ready to do a, a pretty important uh, check with the uh, request. We're now going to see if what we're requesting, uh, if anything, is actually available in stock. And we're going to do that uh, via the Asset Reservations Wizard. And here at the top of the screen, you can see uh, everything that's involved in that request. Um, we, remember, we started out ordering a, a quantity of five of these workstations. And just for time's sake, I'm just going to focus on the, the main asset, the workstations. So you saw right there when I clicked on it, it automatically looked up that particular description of that particular product model to see if we had any in stock. And yes, we do. We have three assets matching that same model and same description in stock. 
So you don't really need to order five here. But you want to make sure you reserve these three assets here in stock so uh, you can use them once the other uh, two machines come in. You'll have them all uh, set and bundled to go out to the five new employees. The wizard will let you reserve these three assets, just like this. What I've done here is uh, set them up for a 90-day reservation. And notice it does, uh, just like when you, know, you set up the request, who the requester was uh, is whoever you're logged in as, the admin. It's reserved for me, for the admin. You can obviously change that in the wizard if you wanted to choose another person. You could also change the number of default days. Uh, but by default, it's going to hold these three assets for you for 90 days. Just a quick summary there. And there we got our three desktops reserved. So now we have the request validated. We have reserved assets for uh, part of what we're requesting. Now we can move on to the estimate, quote, and PO stage. And we'll do that again, just following through with the wizards. Generate that estimate. We're going to focus on the main asset. And here is another important part. Uh, we just saw with the Manage Reservations wizard how we just automatically saved ourselves money. Instead of ordering five machines, we're now going to be ordering two. Here's another important uh, point in the process. Um, in terms of our catalogs, going back to the, to the basis of where we're ordering everything from, for this particular model, what choices do we have to choose from? And you can see here, by looking that model up in our catalogs, there are actually two catalogs that carry this particular product for different prices, for different discounts, <clears throat> you know, possibly various quantities available. But you can see here the benefit of being able to not only make a smarter buying decision in the number that you're ordering, you went from five to two, but now you're going, okay, now that I'm only ordering two, how can I save a little bit more money? Because you had your catalog set up and interfaced, you can now see uh, which one will give you a good price and a good discount. I'll just go with the first one here, and we'll move that along. I'm going to order two of those from the interleasing catalog at a discount of 27% for $849. All right, and now that brings us back to our purchase order screen. Similar to in preparation, notice the order status is a uh, quote requested. Once you're in this stage, um, you're going to do some other uh, things uh, to the request information. Uh, notice here you still have uh, similar information in terms of who the purchaser is, who the supplier is, what date this is all happening, where the assets in question are going to be delivered, and where the source of the estimate is coming from. It's coming from this request that we just did in the previous phase. There is a customized feature here just to show you some flexibility of the tool. You see we have a, an approvals tab out to the side here. At this stage, you could go through a whole other workflow process. Or if, depending on your environment, you wanted to have a quick approval at the uh, purchase order estimate phase, here's a, a customized tab here that just simply says uh, approval. And you can plug in more information here. We're going to 
set our supplementary status on the general tab. This is a user-defined field. You can set it up for whatever you like. I'm going to await approval here. This can just that change can also trigger an alert to someone to come in and validate again the specific order lines on this uh, estimate. These are the particular order lines here. We're going to go take a look. They're going to order that desktop from interleasing. As the uh, person who validates all the specific order lines, I can say, OK, yep, this is an estimate. And going back to our Customize Approvals tab, we can say, I am approving it, whomever the person may be. Either yes or no, I am going to approve it, yes. All this is customized, just something we plugged in to show you some uh, on-screen customization. And now, with all of that information updated, we can change the order status from quote requested to now validated. And now the status can then again change from awaiting the approval to actually being approved. One feature at this point that we can show is now that you have uh, an order that has been validated as well as the specific line approved by a uh, supplementary approval process, you can even drill down even further into some other uh, features and customizations and look at all of the estimates that have been validated. This is the one that I just walked through. This is a custom view. A view in Asset Manager is essentially a customized filtered list that you can save as a named report, like you see here, view validated estimates. And this view is set up to only show you those that have um, gotten the status and uh, approvals that you saw me uh, demonstrate on the previous screen. You can take um, any of these views and reports in Asset Manager and export them out for email delivery or further analysis or, or anything of that nature um, just directly from the screen by running export the list. And you can dump it directly out into a Microsoft Excel file with column headers, etc., or just a simple text file saved to local hard drive to be attached to your email and mailed on. And I just want to um, take a moment to reiterate how even those supplementary customized steps, so supplementary uh, approval steps, um, can be maintained and ordered, again, through, through those same background workflows. And you can redo approvals at, at every step, just like you saw originally with the request, just like we just did here with the estimate slash purchase order. Now that we've gotten through those two phases, we're ready to move this estimate on and actually issue our PO. All right, now we have an issued purchase order. The individual lines now are shifting from an estimate status to an order issued status. That again would be automatically updated per the workflows. Asset manager would then send all the purchase order information to the supplier to have them fulfill the order, mail the mocked up assets to your location, and now we're in the final two stages of receiving and receipts. 
what I'm going to show you now is not from the perspective of the person in the office who was the uh, approval manager or the person making the request. You're now the person on the dock who's going to be receiving this asset into the environment. And we'll kick that off with the receive wizard. From the packaging slip information, you can plug in the appropriate delivery slip number. You can identify who the carrier of the equipment was. And all of these are, are uh, in terms of the list, these are things you can uh, create, uh, customize to your satisfaction. Per the original request, we deliberately wanted it to come into this stock location, so you see that that's already there. And finally, you can say, how many assets are being received from that order. You can do partial receipts as well, i.e. you're just receiving one at a time versus the, the whole uh, package of two. We just created our electronic record of receipt. Here are our two assets. And now we're moving into putting these into your stock and inventory. So for the first asset, after the person pulls out of the box and looks at uh, the information on the uh, barcode or asset tag, they can then go plug in all of that information directly into Asset Manager. And now this specifically can be done like you see here in the Windows client, or it could be done uh, via web uh, interface or on a mobile device. You can do um, all three options to plug in this information here. So they would plug in the serial number, they would plug in the asset tag. If there's a barcode, if there's some other supplementary status that you want applied at the asset level, all of that information can be plugged in at this point in the receiving process. Uh, if, uh, depending on the product that was ordered, um, the information was in the catalog, and you uh, had uh, the time frames uh, set properly, you could automatically plug in a retirement date, or the, the person could plug in the retirement date, uh, as well as any other information associated to these assets. And you see here again the electronic paper trail that's being maintained the whole time. This is where this asset came from, this request, which we got that order, which we just uh, saw the receipt here for the person on the, uh, on the dock. Last but not least, because you did make some reservations, we'll show you those reservations for the other assets in stock that are related to this request. I'm going to the last stock room, which is where we had our assets delivered. Here's all the stocks in that stock room. Here are the two that you just put into the stock room for your, from your receiving process. Here are the three, one, two, three, that you had reserved previously. If you open up that particular asset's information, you can see, sure enough, this one is reserved for me. I, I made that request associated with this reservation. So you can uh, take all five assets now out of this stock room to get them moved out uh, to the uh, individuals, those new employees who are going to be receiving them. Let's go back to our receiving slip, and we'll do our last uh, point in the process, and that's <coughs> uh, the invoicing.
here's the receipt we just um, created. As we're, I just wanted to jump in uh, before before you cover this. I know we're running close to uh, the, the 2 o'clock mark here. And uh, with people having to jump off, I did want to address one of the questions um, that has come through about access for receivers and approvers, um, uh, access for those stakeholders. So the question is around licensing. Um, do our individual licenses required uh, for those types of users? And the answer to that is licenses are required, but typically organizations will get guest user licenses uh, for these users. So these are licenses um, that are less expensive, uh, first and foremost, than those uh, enterprise um, licenses. And additionally, they do limit the access to um, specific areas that those users really would care about. Uh, so it's good from an administrative and a maintenance standpoint as well, uh, making sure users don't have too much access. So, uh, so, the, so the answer there is, uh, yes, they'd require licenses, but those licenses are just guest user licenses. Thank you for filling that one. Yeah. I'm just going to wrap up the uh, invoice here and show them the final phase. And now that we've reconciled our receipts with our invoices, uh, going back to that final point, in tracking, you have the whole life cycle of everything I just shown you here going from the request all the way through to the receipt. All the way back at the beginning, the request, the order that spawned it, when we received it, what reservations were associated with the request, all electronically uh, stored and saved in the asset manager database. And you can maintain that information for all the assets that are procured uh, and ordered. Okay, that goes through each of the four major phases, including the wizards. And I'm going to switch inputs again to bring us back to our slide deck here. Just a really uh, quick point on uh, reports and, in general, uh, the reporting capabilities in Asset Manager. It is packaged with several out-of-the-box reports um, for each of the various modules. In the procurement module, there's, there's a whole uh, slew of uh, reports you can use. But you can also customize reports, like what I demonstrated with the Review Validated Estimates uh, screen that you saw. That was a custom report that I created in five minutes to show you individual uh, purchase orders and lines that have been uh, properly val validated. Uh, for all the reports, whether it's of the type that I showed you with the view or the packaged reports, they can be exported in a variety of formats, including PDF. And you can also create your own crystal reports. Uh, say if you have a particular template or format you'd like to have your reports in, you can import that crystal report into Asset Manager using Asset Manager's data and then run the crystal report and display it from within Asset Manager, which you can also obviously export. Last but not least, just a few words on Computer Consulting's ITAM solution offering. This is intended for those uh, audience members or customers who may be new to IT asset management, don't already have an existing IT asset management uh, system, or just aren't sure where to start. We do have this solution offering um, that can show you uh, very quickly using just IT asset manager, universal discovery inventory, and HP Connected. Um, uh, using a, a simple data set, how you can get some really quick return on investment and benefits um, by doing a small subset of your uh, environment uh, where you'll get some of your IT infrastructure discovered and inventoried. We can show you just right from that small sample set some hardware, software, inventory, and cost allocation information that you can use to manage your assets better in, in that small subset of your organization. Um, along with that, we can also identify um, per a few choice software licenses that you're interested in, in, in monitoring, um, what costs are involved with that and what risk you may be at for uh, under or overutilized software licenses. At the end of the presentation, if you'd like, you can contact Anu and she can send you a full data sheet on this uh, ITAM solution offering.
Anu, I can pass it back over to you. Sure. So, um, so we did have that one question come through about the licenses. And I will just open the question um, manager up now to review the rest. So the next question that's come through is, can you do the ITAM solution offering without HPU CMDB? Uh, and the answer to that is yes, absolutely. So we've got, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of organizations use other uh, discovery tools, such as, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, SCCM, um, uh, other third-party tools, uh, ad hoc databases, and so on. And all of those can uh, de most definitely be fed into this solution. So the answer is yes. Uh, the next question that I see coming through is for those, so Laurent, this question is for you. Um, for those uh, workflow schemas that you pointed to, are there any out of the box ones and uh, are those typically used? Uh, yes, there are several out of the box ones. And I'm talking uh, dozens upon dozens of out of the box ones. And nine times out of ten, the out-of-the-box ones, um, 80 to 90 percent apply to a given organization's needs or requirements. And what I do as the consultant is just modify that to specifically fit whatever the customer's requirements uh, are. Um, there are a few situations where we do build one from scratch. And, and usually those are, are, by and large, one-off type of situations. But, but of course, you can build your workflow from scratch. Um, but uh, as far as out-of-the-box ones, there's a ton to choose from, and they apply to every module of asset manager, not just procurement, but inventory control, software asset management, contracts, uh, you name it. There's, there's dozens upon dozens for each of those uh, functional areas within asset manager. Okay, good to know, and good question there. Uh, the next question I see is, do end users typically find the web access to be user friendly, or is uh, considerable training required for those end users? And here, Laurent, I think they're referring to um, just those uh, approvers or receivers and so on. Um, actually, I would say uh, as far as a person in that role, they're not really using asset manager on a day-to-day -day basis if, if, uh, in terms of like a power user, an inventory management person or a contracts management person. If all they're doing is making a decision on, on something you ordered uh, is, is appropriate and approved, the web client is actually the way to go. Um, it, it is the most efficient. It actually um, utilizes uh, whatever licenses you, you buy to go along with uh, your asset manager uh, package. Um, uh, it's a lot easier and more efficient to use the web client for those people to simply log into the web client. Um, if they have uh, decision points for the workflows awaiting their approval, the screen takes them directly to that. They don't have to navigate all over the world, you know, all over the place to get to do I just need to approve this or not, or do I just need to you know, review this information and approve it or not, the web client can take them right uh, to it. Also, um, uh, not um, specific to the web client, but to both the Windows client and the web client, you do have uh, user roles and profiles. And by that, um, only an approver is going to see things waiting his approval. He's not going to be able to go you know, sneak a peek at what assets you have or what software is on your computer. If you're a contract manager and you're tracking information and as a manager in relation to contracts, when that person logs in with that role, contract manager, they're only going to see the relative information in the contracts module. And whether they're navigating through the web client or the Windows client, it, it tailors the, uh, the, the navigation bar like you saw there to only point them into that particular uh, part of the information. They won't have to trudge through all these other screens or all these other windows to get to the information that they're concerned about. Those uh, profiles will, will narrow the focus and take you right to where you need to go. OK, great. Um, so now I, I'm looking at, uh, we've got two questions just come in. And anyone else who has questions, please do uh, submit them now. So the next question we've had is, uh, does Configure Consulting have a services offering for on-site or remote assessment of the existing work that we've done uh, to see if we can uh, extend the value of our existing implementation? Can you share details around this? Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, 
Yes, oh. go ahead, Anu, you, you got it. Okay, uh, so the answer to that is yes, uh, very much so. And we often find the assessment to be a, a really strong session where we look at how ITEM is currently being used, what the roadmap is, what the challenges are, and we really look to uh, provide answers and you know solutions or recommendations for those specific challenges uh, leading towards that roadmap. So we've had uh, a lot of customers have um, you know uh, really positive outcomes uh, out of these assessments, and um, you know if you're interested, I can will send around an overview of what those assessments are like after this webinar. And just to be clear, we go both ways, and by that I mean remote or on site. Yes, that's right. Uh, and the next question is, do you have any staff augmentation or managed services offerings uh, surrounding ITAM? And the answer to that is yes, very much so. And we found um, the staff augmentation model where, you know, just to be clear, that's when a professional consultant will come on site and work with your team as a member of your team. We found that to be really successful when it comes to procurement, when it comes to asset management, because it allows them to, you know, take the time to coordinate with that contracts team to get the information that they need. Uh, you know, work extensively with the uh, other vendors to get the vendor catalog information and all the other inputs. So um, staff, augmenta staff augmentation very much so. Managed services, the other part of that question, um, yes, we do offer managed services. And this is a situation wherein we will um, set up the asset manager and the procurement module, and we will be the administrators for it. Uh, and and that's, you know, that's also saved quite a bit of uh, pain for organizations that have chosen to go that route, because the administration is all uh, very much so taken care of. Okay, and with that, um, that is the end of the questions. We do thank you very much for taking the time to attend uh, our webinar today. We hope it, it was informative uh, for everyone on the call. Once you leave this meeting, if you think of any other questions uh, or if you have any other thoughts, please do feel free to uh, reach out to either myself or Laurent. Um, we're more than happy to answer any questions that, uh, that do come up. And, um, we look forward to uh, seeing you all at our next webinar. Thank you very much, and have a good evening.